If you're thinking of moving to Australia, you're probably wondering what the benefits are. I moved to Australia from the UK in 2015 and I'm going to run through 15 things that I love about living in Australia. I'm Lisa from Australian travel and migration blog dreamingofdanunder.com and I've travelled almost the whole coastline of Australia and I've spent the last six years living in Sydney. So here are the reasons that I think you should move to Australia. The first thing I love about Australia is how diverse the landscape is. Everybody knows that Australia has amazing beaches, but it also has a huge array of different types of scenery and it's a really enormous country with lots of different climates. As well as beaches, Australia has beautiful mountain ranges, it has different types of rainforest, it has ancient forests with some of the tallest tree species in the world, it has desert, it has dry scenery with salt lakes, it's got the Great Barrier Reef. The scenery in Australia is phenomenal. Number two is the variation in climate across the country. Because Australia is so huge, it has lots of different climates in the different regions. So I live in Sydney, which is kind of a middle of the range climate for Australia. But if I want a hot holiday, I can just fly a couple of hours north to Queensland and it's high 20s. If I want to go skiing, I could fly a couple of hours southwest and go to a ski resort. So really, whatever time of year it is, you can find somewhere to suit whatever kind of holiday you want. Also, if you're moving here, you can find the right kind of climate for you. I love Sydney climate. It's got hot summers, a little bit too humid, but that's OK. And the winters are mild, but not too cold. So that's just right for me. Number three is the coffee culture in Australia. Coming from the UK, it is popular to go out for coffee there, but they generally have the big chain stores like Starbucks and Nero and Costa. Whereas in Australia, they've got a sort of older coffee culture, which apparently came from the early Italian settlers and Greek settlers, I think. Um, so Melbourne in particular is very coffee cultured. So they have lots and lots of really independent small cafes rather than big chains. They do have some big chains but they've lots and lots of really arty kind of funky cafes. Even the most untrendy of suburbs can have like really, really nice cafes. So I do love that about Australia. Also, it's very popular to go and meet friends for coffee in the morning. It has more of a breakfast culture in Australia. So living by the beaches like I do, you just go down and people are meeting friends for coffee, sitting outside cafes, going for walks. It's a really nice culture. Number four is Australia's healthcare system, which I think is brilliant. So it's not like in the UK where it's completely publicly funded and everything's free, but it's also not completely privately funded. It's kind of a hybrid. So you can get a lot of services for free here. You can see a GP for free. Hospital treatment is generally free. Um, and then a lot of things are partly subsidised by the government. So you pay the bill and then you get a refund of part of that amount. So I think just having that extra money in the system. Also, it's quite common to have health insurance here, more so I would say than in the UK. But having all that extra funding in the system just means that it's not as strained. So it's very, very quick to get medical attention. In my experience, you can see a GP on the day. Even if I look at appointments online in the afternoon, I can still have a choice of doctors for that day. To have an x-ray, you usually just walk straight in and don't need an appointment. With scans, I've found that you can normally get an appointment the next day. Also with seeing specialists, it's quite easy to get an appointment to see a specialist. It's not like in the UK where you kind of have to, you know, be half dead before they'll let you go and see one. Um, I had a chronic, actually I had multiple chronic illnesses that I had for years in the UK and I couldn't get anywhere with the doctor. I just, I got sent for a few tests. They did a few blood tests. I was just told, no, no, no. You're imagining it basically. Here, the first time I went to see a GP, they did blood tests. She immediately sent me to see a specialist and I got to choose what kind of specialist depending on what symptom I was most worried about. I saw a neurologist on the same day in the GP <laughs> surgery. He just happened to be working there that day. He sent me for tests. I came back, he diagnosed me with a neurological condition. He then got me referred to a rheumatologist and I saw her, she diagnosed me on the spot with fibromyalgia, basically just did a, like they press points on your body and see if it hurts. Can't how many times you scream. <laughs> she diagnosed me on the spot with that, did some blood tests, went back to see her and I got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease that was like the underlying cause. So just within like a few months I had years and years of illness just diagnosed like that. It's such, such a good system. Number five is how friendly it is in Australia and what a sense of community there is. I live in Sydney, which is the biggest, busiest city. 
And I've heard people saying yeah, it's really fast paced, it's unfriendly, but I just haven't found that. I think compared to where I'm from in the UK, it's very friendly, it's very normal to say hello to strangers. Maybe if you're living right in the city centre, that might be a bit different. But um, I live in a beach area and everyone's really friendly. Like whenever I walk the dog, I have multiple conversations with people. I don't start them, I'm not really that kind of person. But people always speak to you. People are so willing to, to help you out. It's a really, really friendly culture. Number six is the diverse nationalities in Australia. A really huge proportion of people in Australia were born overseas and even a lot of Australians have parents who were born overseas. So it is a very accepting culture I found and it's really nice just to hear lots of different accents and meet people from different places. And I do find because there's a lot of expats, it makes it a little bit easier to make friends because generally I found expats are sort of actively looking to make friends, particularly if they're quite new. Number seven is a culture of being really respectful and polite to service workers and just generally being sort of inclusive. I worked in retail in the UK as a student and honestly the amount of the amount of moaning and abuse you got from customers, I, I hated it. People used to come in every day and complain and here I worked in uh, a clothes shop called Portman's when I was doing my work in holiday. And honestly, in three months, I only had one customer come in and moan in <laughs> three months. I couldn't believe it. It's a different world. It's just not accepted to sort of take your misery <laughs> out on people working in shops. And I don't know how the culture is so different in the UK. It's just, it just constant moaning and the shop's not set up right. And why is this upstairs? And I wanted discounts and um, just get some really angry customers. And here it's, it's just not that culture. Like people are just a lot to I find. Number eight is how fair the wages are in Australia. The minimum wage is I think just over $22 an hour which is quite high so it's actually not standard to tip um, waiting staff in restaurants because the wages basically are high enough so they don't have to rely on tips. So I couldn't really believe it when I started house sitting in Australia. Sometimes people would leave me cash to give to their cleaners and gardeners and I, uh, I just couldn't believe how high it was. <laughs> That's why I started charging for house sitting because I realised I wasn't, um, I was doing too much work for just for the rent I was receiving. Honestly, some of the cleaners in the house I've been in get paid $65 an hour each. Some of the gardeners were getting paid about $60 or $70 to mow the lawn, which took them 15 minutes. The wages here can be really high for service jobs, particularly if you're self-employed. Apparently the average full-time wage in Australia is around $90,000 a year, which is really high. So yeah, wages are really good here. Number nine is how supportive Australia is of small independent businesses. They do have big chain stores and things here, but there seems to be a really high proportion of small businesses basically so shops like boutiques cafes just uh, creative businesses it's really well supported here i'm a business owner and i get a lot of support from the government and i get emails with useful information and also during covid the the government kind of um, payments to help out people even with small businesses was really great so you are really well looked after i feel like it's quite valued here Number 10 is the variation of different foods here. So from supermarket food to restaurants, you've got all kinds of nationalities. So particularly with so many different nationalities living in Australia, they do really cater for that, I find, in the supermarkets and restaurants. And I'm gluten-free and pescatarian, so I'm a little bit fussy, but I can always find something to eat. Occasionally, I maybe have to have a salad, but generally, even if I ask in a restaurant, they will cater to being gluten-free, so they are pretty good about that kind of stuff. Number 11 is the bird life in Australia. It's one of the first things that I noticed when I moved over to Australia for the first time when I was a student. They have lots of very big, colourful birds here, very noisy. They have lots of parrots, they're really beautiful. Uh, the birds tend to be very tame as well. I've occasionally had them land on my leg. Sometimes I'll try and steal your food and stuff. <laughs> Actually, cyclists have to wear helmets. This isn't a good thing. Um, with like straws sticking out because the magpies will swoop and peck them. Yeah, that's not that's not a thing I love, but it is unusual. <laughs> but the birds are generally very beautiful. Number 12 is the unique wildlife in Australia. So as well as birds, there's all sorts of other animals. And yes, there are some dangerous ones, but it's very unlikely you're gonna be killed by one. As well as kangaroos, you've got lots and lots of other marsupials, you've got quokkas, you've got wallabies, wombats, all sorts of animals, lots and lots of Dolphins and amazing marine life. Insects are really interesting. I know some of them are scary, but like 
all sorts of funny hairy caterpillars <laughs> and amazing butterflies and once I just walked past this tree in Sydney and it had these jewel bugs on which were just these amazing metallic like blue and orange colours really really amazing. Number 13 is the outdoor lifestyle in Australia because of all the amazing scenery and the generally mild weather it is very common to enjoy outdoor activities so things like hiking is really popular water sports there's lots of really well marked walking tracks along the coastlines and through national parks so there's just so much opportunity to get out there and enjoy yourself it's very common to go down to the beach in the morning if you live by a beach there's people swimming and doing boot camps on the beach in the mornings people just meeting up for coffee it's just very very outdoorsy number 14 is that the properties tend to be quite large here so sydney and melbourne are quite expensive yes but in general the houses are bigger than in the UK you generally have a separate laundry room even in like one or two bedroom flats I've been in they quite often have a separate laundry you just get a little bit more space than you tend to in the UK number 15 is how safe it is in Australia so everywhere has crime of course but generally I've always felt very safe here and I do think it's got fairly low crime rates compared to a lot of other countries I mean Sydney is the biggest busiest city here and I've had sat in over 70 suburbs I think and I've never ended up anywhere that's felt rough or unsafe I've always felt very very safe here a lot of people don't even lock their doors in Sydney like even people who live nearer the city <laughs> honestly I house it and um, some of the places I've been they're like oh we don't use a key I think I, I don't think that's a good idea <laughs> I think uh, it's always worth locking your doors but it is a, a very sort of generally safe culture here Okay, those are my 15 things that I love about Australia. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments if you're thinking of moving to Australia or if you're already over here and the things that you really love about it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching. Are you biting your bottom? Can you not do that on camera? Is it just your leg? All right. You're going to sit down and be still. Don't, don't bite your bottom on the camera.